Hello. So um, yeah, this presentation is about Secret V2. Um, it's titled Status Update, but I'm going to try to explain the basics along the way. Um, who's familiar with C group? Have used it? Okay, cool. Okay, that's a lot. Um, I want to, um, I don't know, I want to make it, you know, interactive rather than just me talking. So if you want to, if you have any questions, just ask. Um, I don't have like a lot of slides, so we can take time. So, um, you want to first talk about timeline. So uh, C, to begin with, C group is something which uh, is a feature in Linux kernel which allows you to organize your, your threads or processes in a, in a tree. So you build a tree and you put process or threads in it and then you do something with it. So that was the original idea of C group. Um, and, um, and, and it's mostly focused on, um, it has been mostly focused on resource control. So uh, you build, build a tree of, of um, threads or processes and you assign, you try to allocate resources along that tree. So that's the basic, you know, what C group is about, what it's all about. And um, um, so V1 has been around for quite a while and um, I, I uh, started working on V2 um, way back in, in 2012, that's like probably four years ago. Um, and, and the problem with C group V1, why, why, the reason why uh, we started working on C group V2 was that um, V1 didn't really have it because I mean, it was such a new, uh, new area in the corner. So, um, and it also, it touched a lot of subsystems. If you think about like resources used, used in the system, right? There's CPU, there's, you know, IO, there's memory, you know, there's network things somehow factors into it. So um, we didn't really know, people really didn't know how to go about it. So people were, you know, figuring out as they, you know, go implement it. So, uh, so we uh, ended up with a lot of um, limitations and, and, and problems, issues with our uh, basic design. Um, and, and also like a lot of inconsistencies uh, across different subsystems. So that's why we started working on Secret V2. Um, and then we mostly started, you know, we're trying to determine like out of all the features that we have implemented in C group V1, you know, what's viable, what's important and what's missing and, and, you know, what's broken. So we, we try to clean those things up and determine, you know, what's what in the process. And, um, so, uh, the, uh, so, uh, one big difference between V1 and V2 is that V1 allows you to have like any number of trees you have you can have like 200 trees nobody does but you know theoretically you can you usually a system ends up with you know about seven eight ten hierarchies um and then you can organize them uh so a single process or single thread can be in in if there are say you know 10 hierarchies in the system it will be you know uh, uh in in all of them each of them once right you know in a single hierarchy it will be in a single place but on each hierarchy, it, it can be on different places. Um, and um, so that was some problem. So, um, so Secret V2, the big idea about Secret V2 is that having a single hierarchy so that everybody can agree on it uh, on a single organization. So that, uh, that, that uh, experimenter uh, implementation of that unified hierarchy um, was implemented in the corner in 2014, April. Uh, so it already took, you know, over, well, well over a year, um, to have like this basic idea, um, being to, to be tested. And, um, and, uh, last year, uh, around winter, um, um, after, so, um, so between 2014, April and to the last winter, um, the corner had code for unified hierarchy, but it was hidden behind the, an experimental flag. Um, so like if you boot the kernel with a really like awkward, uh, uh, kernel parameter, kernel argument, then you could, you know, access it. Like that's how we evolved the implementation over time because I mean, it was so, uh, it was really, um, its implementation is really intricately, um, intertwined with e existing secret V1 code base. And we didn't want to, you know, have like this large, um, change outside the kernel. Um, and then, you know, ch try to, you know, uh, keep them in sync. So, um, implementation of secret V2 was, has happened inside V1, uh, by gradually evolving it inside corner without, you know, actually exposing it to user space. 
And um, um, but last winter, we decided that you know it's not good enough. Um, um, we have been uh, testing with uh, some user space parts and, and different scenarios, and, and it seems to work fine. So uh, we removed the um, um, experimental interface, I mean, ex ex experimental flag, and exposed it as a, a proper uh, file system type so that people can use it. And that's not going to change. No, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's that part, and it's now it's in setting stone. So right now, uh, uh, memory and IO and PS controllers are um, supported on Secret V2. Um, which is, you know, pretty good set, but, uh, there's a, a still big missing piece, which is CPU controller. Um, so I, I'm gonna come back to that later, but that's the status quo. Uh, that's the current state. Um, you can, you can do memory IO and PIDs, but not CPU when you download the mainline corner. Uh, so, uh, what's, what's V2 about? Um, like in, in contrast to V1, this is what sums what V2 is about. And, and, um, so V1, right, uh, as I, I talked before, talked about before, um, you have your organized processes and you do something vaguely, vaguely related to resources with those hierarchies. And, and that was what V1 was. And the problem was that different, so if you look at, you know, CPU, uh, 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 usage control and IO control and memory control or whatever as, you know, network control, they were all doing things widely differently and there was no consistent scheme um, or, or, or resource model behind them. So um, they were all behaving fairly differently and, and some were not you know, co compatible with each other at all. Um, for example, right, you have a tree, right? And, and you think because it's a tree that the behavior would be hierarchical, right? Uh, uh, resource consumption in a child would be attributed to parent too, right? Otherwise, the tree doesn't make any sense, right? But some controllers just didn't do that, right? They had a tree, but they just ignored all the tree structure. So um, there were just a lot of inconsistencies everywhere. And, um, and also resource control, because, you know, we were, I think we were learning our way through it. Um, it was fairly obtained, right? I mean, we didn't start out with the goal of, um, we want to control and account for, you know, all noticeable resource consumptions on the system, right? It is more like, you know, it's all implementation based. If you look at, you know, a, a memory that, you know, oh yeah, that's a memory usage, say page cache that we can easily track, then we implement that, right? And after a while, people realize that, oh, that's not the only, you know, major resource usage, you know, KMM cache can, uh, kernel memory usage can be really high. So we want to track that too, right? So then that gets added on, but as a, like a something's, you know, separate, not quite part of the original thing, right? And then people realize that network buffers are really big, right? And then they add it as a, another separate piece. And then it's, it's just all these disjoint pieces, which sometimes can be made to work together, but not quite. Um, you know, there's no, there was no like pressure uh, uh, propagation mechanism between them. They had all separate knobs. Um, they're all siloed in, in, in their, um, silos. And so, I mean, it didn't really work well. You know, if you, if you, you know, if you try to approach a problem of resource control, splitting a system, like into a hierarchical resource domains and, and expecting, you know, a single domain to consume certain amount of resources, you couldn't do that really. Um, and, um, and, and the thing is that, you know, as we go along, like we realize that, you know, with the current approach, you can really do that. Um, <clears throat> so that's where, where, you know, the V2 uh, came about. And then what it tries to do is that uh, it tries to cons uh, implement comprehensive and consistent um, hierarchical accounting and control of all significant resource consumptions in the system. So, I mean, it's a, a lot simpler model, right? It's, uh, it's not, it's a, a, a more consistent and concise model where you approach a system and, and, and you try to split all its resource consumptions hierarchically, and, and that's what it does. So um, what does V2 do? So uh, how is it different from V1? What does it do to achieve that goal? So um, the first thing uh, is what I talk about, the unified hierarchy, right? So uh, V2 has a single hierarchy. Um, 
so that different resource types agree on what the resource domain is, right? Um, so if, if you think about, say, uh, uh, it's a, so the page cache write back is a really good example of it. Um, who, who knows what a page cache is? Awesome. So when you do like a write to system call, when you, you know, do a buffer write, it doesn't really go to the uh, uh, file system on the disk directly, right? Uh, it gets cached in the memory, and after some time, or you know, uh, after a certain event, it gets written uh, back to uh, the you know backing device, whether that's disk or SSD or whatever. And um, that part is called the page cache write back. And if you if you think about page cache write back, um, both memory and I/O plays a role in it, right? If your process is trying to do a, a you know write system call, right, um, and if you're out of memory, you cannot really do that, right. So then you need memory to dirty the page cache, and then that that dirty page cache needs to be written back, which uses <laughs> I/O. So the thing is that um, a, a, a process, a thread which is trying to do write, is regulated by both its memory pressure and I/O pressure, right. If your memory pressure is too high. You have to wait until you know it gets less by writing back some of the dirty data through the I/O, right? So the I/O uh, pressure gets propagated to memory, and that gets propagated to the application, which gets throttled when it tries to dirty a page. That's you know the the, feed, the main feedback mechanism that we control um, how fast we we can write out things when using uh, forward writes. And and let's say let's say you know uh, I/O. Domain and, and, and memory domains are completely separate, right? So like a, a, a thread that can belong to one IO domain while belonging to another memory domain. And a memory domain can contain, you know, any number of threads from any number of IO domains, right? At that point, you, you can really not, there's no reliable and, and, and understandable way of mapping, like propagating IO pressure through memory pressure and then to the process. So you kind of have to agree on Right, uh, what a domain is, what a resource domain is, given a, a resource consumption, like where it belongs. Otherwise, you cannot make different uh, I/O types to be controlled in a in a consistent way. So uh, that's uh, one example. And um, so, in feature-wise, that's also one of the big differences of particular V2 compared to V1. So if you're using V1, if you do a, a buffer write, right, just a regular write call, write call, or you know, a, a you dirty a page of a shared and mapped page, then writing back of that, that page, that page cache, will go through the root C group all the time. So that's not going to be controlled in any way because there's no way of knowing. There's just no way. I just, you know, doesn't know where it should be charged. Um, on on C group V2, um, you know, it does that properly now. It, it tracks uh, uh, where, where a page cache belongs to and, and can, can attribute uh, that uh, both in terms of memory and I/O to that particular C group and, and account it that way and, and control that way. So that's one uh, right now a big uh, feature difference between V1 and V2. And um, another thing, so I mean, and, and in general, right? In general, going forward, we haven't implemented a lot of them yet, but there are other resource consumptions which are which cannot be charged immediately. To the consumer, right? If you think about packet reception, right? When the network packets come in, you end up spending a lot of CPU cycles. We already do that with memory, but um, you know, if you think about CPU cycle, you end up spending a lot of CPU cycles, but you don't know who that belongs to until you do all the TCP demuxing and whatnot, right? And at that point, you already have spent quite a bit of CPU cycle, and you don't know what to do with it. Right now, we charge you to root C group, but you know, this is not. This is not right. I mean, this really should be charged to the C group, which is receiving those packets, right? Um, and at the same time, right, if you think about memory, right, so when you receive a packet, you have to allocate memory to, to receive that thing, and then eventually have to charge it to the domain, which consumes it. So things like that um, has already, uh, is already implemented or, or, or coming, and, and, and a lot of that depends on um, Having this uh, common resource domain hierarchy, uh, resource domain definition across different usages. Sorry about that. Um, 
different level screen quality. Um, that's, it's, uh, it's just that, uh, it just means that, you know, you can enable and disable controllers along the hierarchy so that you don't always have to use all controls all the time. Um, and um, in, in V1, because we were so ad hoc in, in development, we don't really have like clear models. Um, it's a good example is delegation. Um, right, let's say you have a container, right? And, 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 and is, if the container is in the resource hierarchy, somewhere in the resource tree is somewhere uh, under the root way, you know, nested certain levels under the root. And um, you wanna delegate resource control inside the container to the agent inside the container, whoever that is. That could be a person, uh, you know, system software or whatever. For that to happen, right, you, you, you need, you're delegating the resource control into the container. For that to happen, like first of all, all controllers, all controllers should behave hierarchically, right? They shouldn't be able to escape, like giving control to that resource hierarchy, the subtree, shouldn't allow the, uh, uh, the thing, the, the container, to escape resource constraints, which is put on by the parent. Even that was not true on V1, right? So that didn't really work. Um, or, right, or, um, it also would need the same kind of notification mechanisms which is available in the, in the system C group, uh, in the system environment uh, inside the container. Like if you think about um, one of the notifications that C group generates is that um, when a C group becomes empty, it generates a notification that this C group is empty. And that's what a lot of system agents depend on to clean up, to know when a service or an application has exited and then to clean it up and whatnot. And that mechanism is just, uh, uh, in V1, it's not delegatable at all, I mean, it's not segmentable. So you just kind of have to get the notification in the loot, in the system-wide environment, and then pipe it into the, you know, container somehow, which is just ugly. Oh, I, there are just a lot of things which, you, you know, there was no clear model, so people, you know, tried two different things. Uh, and, and different people code on, you know, code different things, right? Um, some people got this part right, other people got this part right, but nobody got everything right. And, and nothing really, there was no, no single way of, you know, doing delegation that people could agree upon. Um, Zero B2 tries to fix that. And it has a, a clear model of delegation that you have to, you know, if you do it this way, then you will have everything necessary for delegation. And if you, you know, and it also, if you do it otherwise differently, then, you know, you're gonna break things. So there's just one way of doing delegation now. Um, and similarly, like uh, all controllers now agree on uh, several resource types. So for example, like if, if, uh, resource control models, for example, right, uh, CPU and, and IO, well, CPU is still out of tree, but, you know, they, they have um, weight-based control, proportional control, which says that, this C group should have you know twice more than this C group, right? But while you know uh, conceptually they were the same on V1, they had completely different interface. You know they have uh, different base values, they have had different ranges, and they had you know different interface format of uh, file formats. And as you know, like you have to use certain range of values on for one, and completely different range of values for another one, which is kind of gets confusing after a while. So uh, V2 uh, kind of strictly defines uh, as, you know, several uh, control models and how the interface should be and what the value range should be um, so that you know, they all behave in a uniform way. And um, I talked about uh, notification, but there were other you know, various cleanups. So uh, the problem with the CPU controller, why it's still out of tree. So what, what, um, what is out of tree it's not that big. Um, so, so CPU controller still has all the code for V1. And what is out of tree is just the part which exposes um, CPU controller on a V2, V2 hierarchy and it's like less than a hundred line patch. It's not, you know, that, not that much of a change. It's just a declaring interface files for V2. And that part is missing. And, and uh, the problem there, why the reason, the reason why that's out of line um, at this point it's because, um, so CPU controller, uh, I mean, scheduler uh, maintainers 
have certain objection to uh, the core designs of Segro P2, and um, and uh, and um, uh, uh, objects to exposing a CPU controller, which is a part of scheduler in 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 under in the Segro P2. So we are still you know talking you know, how to you know how to agree upon a certain way uh, uh, agree upon these issues. So um, like there are as far as I can tell, there are two major disagreements at this point that I can identify. The first one is the uh, no internal processes constraint. Um, it, it says that you know if you if you think about tree, right? So so resource graph is a tree a system at the root, and uh, no internal processes rule um, dictates that uh, that uh, a node which is internal, which has children are fundamentally different from a, a edge node, a lift node. And only uh, only lift node can contain processes. And what it does is that the reason for um, doing that is that um, it prevents, um, so uh, it, it does two things. The first one is that um, it allows accounting for um, anonymous resource consumptions, right? Uh, anonymous, I, I, by anonymous I mean that Certain resource consumptions cannot be tied to a, a specific thread or process. Um, it's this, uh, write back is another good example, right? Uh, when you when somebody dirties a page cache, right? Um, you don't really track everything. You may track uh, the first instantiator of the page, right? But you know multiple threads can dirty the same same page, can access the same page, which only get written out once later. Or you know the thread dirties it, right? The, the process dirties a, a page, writes to a page, but then the process exits, and then after a while the page gets written, right? So the page cannot. It's really difficult to tie that page to a single instance or a single operation um, when it gets written back, right? You can. What you can say is that you know this page cache belongs to this resource domain, but I'm not completely sure who in the domain, right? Uh, the same goes for a lot of uh, memory management operations, and um, uh, it's just you know there are just you know anonymous things which happens in a resource domain. That that or, or for example, right, if you are trying to write a page right from from coming from a page cache right back, and and you have um, encryption enabled, so now you are encrypting the page right, which is consumes a lot of CPU cycles. Right. Because you know you don't know you don't know the clear you haven't established the clear ownership of that write back operation to a single thread. Now you cannot tie that to a single thread. I mean it's just tied to the to the resource domain that it belongs to. Um, so like having that distinction between a uh, clear distinction between resource domain and, and and processes. So it's just saying that uh, a process or a thread might not be a terminal consumer of a resource. And there are resources consumptions that that we cannot tie to a specific thread, um, and and allowing that you know requires you have a, a, a treat resource domains differently from threads, um, which is you know true in the system too, right? I mean, if you look at uh, just you know, you boot a system, right? And there's IRQ going on, you know, there are like soft IRQ going on, you know, bottom half running, whatever uh, K threads running, uh, K workers running. There are a lot of resource consumptions which are not tied to a specific thread, right? It's just a system consumption, and 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 distinguishing uh, resource domain and processes allows you to have you know similar kind of concept inside the C group, you know, uh, uh, nested in a C group. You still have that anonymous consumption which is in the system, but siloed to your own domain. Um, so there's internal uh, no internal process constraint. Um, scheduler doesn't really need it. Right now, um, it might need, might need it in the future to account for, um, say, you know, packet reception, uh, CPU cycle spend during pa uh, packet reception, or, or you know, uh, disk encryption, or memory reclaim. Memory reclaim is a famously domain-wide operation. It doesn't, you know, it's tied to any process. Um, so that's so one where one disagreement is because um, it is an extra restriction when seen from when purely seen from a scheduler side. Uh, the other disagreement is uh, pr process granularity, um, and that means that C group P2 doesn't allow putting threads which belong to the same same process to different C groups. Um, 
uh, it's mostly because uh, it's, uh, there are two reasons for that. One is that you know for some controllers it just doesn't make any sense because I mean, if you think about memory, right, the thread doesn't consume memory, a process does. A thread can allocate the memory, but you know other threads may use that memory, and thread can go away while the memory is still there, right? So memory consumption is always tied to the address space, not the thread. So uh, it doesn't really make sense for me uh, memory. And we want to put all, all, all controls on the same footing. So that's one of the reasons to do that. And the other reason for doing that is um, it just kind of, if you think about your threads of process, right? Uh, you don't really know what each thread is doing in a process. There's no reliable way of knowing that, right? If you PS and you see multiple threads in the process, right? And there's no way of knowing from outside what each thread is doing unless the, you know, the, the program itself cooperates with you and you somehow know the internals of the process. And um, so, I mean, like, so, so the thread knowledge is uh, uh, something which belongs to the application um, and you cannot get that without the application. Um, cooperating with you. And um, if you think about, so I mean, so that's one point. And the other thing is that if you think about, you know, setting, uh, uh, distributing uh, CPU cycles across your threads, right? Right now, how do you control that? I mean, you would do set priority system call, right? Or, or um, if you have multiple processes, maybe you will use nice system call or, or the tool, right? And, and that's uh, still pretty much there's a very different uh, interface from uh, what Siegel provides. Siegel provides a file system based interface when you have to make directory echo number of your PID or zero to a file. And then the, you write, similarly, you write a number string, you know, for your configuration to a file. Um, and then when, you know, your threads exit, when it becomes empty, you kind of have to remove it uh, uh, explicitly using RMDIR system call. So um, it's a very different type of interface um, when seen from uh, application programmer's point of view. And um, I think that if we want to make this widely available, we probably should make this a proper system call interface. But there are some disagreements there because people could do some wacky things, like really custom settings by putting you know, threads of a process into different C groups. And they, uh, people still want to do that. So there are some conflicts there. I mean, there are some lots of functionalities there. So uh, we're gonna see, but uh, I don't know. I mean, given time, we should be able to agree on something. So the discussion is still ongoing. Um, there are two links that I posted. There's a, a excellent LWN article um, summarizing uh, the situation. And, and the, the second link is the thread, which, which is still ongoing. So if you're interested, you can read it. But I, I think that you know it's gonna take some time, but we're gonna agree on something eventually. So other things uh, on v uh, four dot three, we added a PS controller because we realized that uh, there there were multiple propos like a couple of proposals for PS controller, but it, they got rejected because we already thought that it was a part of memory, right? Um, if you restrict memory, then you know you're if you restrict kernel memory, right? You're restricting uh, PS consumption, but that turn didn't turn out to be true because um, PS space is really small. It's like I, I forgot is it 15 bit or something like that. So you know it can get you know uh, uh, depleted way before memory is depleted on the system. So it just needs to be a separate resource. It's just kind of weird, but that's what it is. Um, and the uh, namespace support, C group namespace support was added at on 4.6. Which means that uh, before uh, you could bind mount a C group, a subtree of uh, a C group inside the container and pretend that it's your own hierarchy, but it wasn't quite because if you like if you're in a names uh, if you're inside a, an application scoped in a names uh, not in C group namespace but bind mounted C group, then if you do cat proc self C group, then it, it would show a path a full path, uh, which is you know which ignores the bind mount. Obviously, so um, it was not trans quite transparent. So what uh, C group uh, namespace support does is that um, it, it you know removes that that inconsistency. So if you're in a namespace which in including C group namespace, then you know you can look at proxy 
you know, C group and, and your path would match uh, with the root of your namespace if you're inside the namespace. There's still some bugs, we're checking it out, but um, yeah, people are pretty happy with it. Um, RDMA controller is being worked on. Um, I really don't know that much about RDMA, so I'm just trying to make sure that it's, uh, it's, not, it's not gonna explode into uh, uncontrolled you know, set of knobs that nobody understands, so we're just trying to stick to the like, uh, most basic set of controls. But uh, uh, there, there have been some disagreements, but um, yeah, it seems to be going well now. So usually in support, um, so systemd actually has had experimental secret v2 support for quite a while, for, for over a year now. But, um, but because secret v2 um, evolved uh, wide inside um, corner, and you know, the initial systemd support to us based on the initial proposal. So you know, you know, after a while it didn't really work. So they got, it got updated recently, and systemd 232, which is the next version, I believe, um, we'll have full secret V2 support, including CPU controller. So if you patch the um, out of tree corner side, corner patch to enable CPU controller on secret V2, and if you have a you know, latest systemd, it'll just work. Um, also, uh, 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 systemd 232 will be able to use secret V2 for process management instead of V1 even when you are using V1 for everything else, for, for actual resource control. And the, the, the reason for that is that uh, V2 is just another hierarchy, so you can use it in parallel with other V1 hierarchies. And, and V2 has just a lot better process management features. And then systemd has a lot of craft and some feature deficiencies because of uh, uh, problems with V1, uh, especially with the uh, empty notification. So um, uh, systemd, I, I don't remember the de details right now, but um, SystemD wouldn't be able to tell whether a service became, a scope became empty or not in, under certain conditions, and that kind of goes away with V2. And, um, and also the code becomes a lot simpler, so yeah, SystemD will be uh, using a V2 and its full process management, even, you know, if not for um, resource control. And I'm, I, I'm working on a leaf bird support, and it both uh, so I, I personally worked on systemd and leaflet support, and, and that's mostly because that we try to use it uh, inside of Facebook, and then you know we use systemd and and leaflet, so that's why I, I'm working on it. And then so I started working on leaflet support. Hopefully it will uh, land, you know, in not too far future. And um, like in 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 Facebook, uh, we are deploying CentOS Seven. And mainline systemd, so we just take a uh, trunk systemd, and uh, we, we try to develop everything in, in in the trunk, and then deploy that. And and we are trying our system uh, secret v2 for resource control inside Facebook, and uh, it, there we are we are hitting some um, uh, some um, issues, but it's progressing pretty well. So uh, that's all the slides I have. Um, questions, comments. Um, concerning the, transi the transition from V1 to V2, uh, they can live together on the same system. You can mount the bo both hierarchy hierarchies. Yeah, so um, V2 is uh, another hierarchy. Um, so the only thing is that, uh, uh, the only restriction there is that if you have, a, say, let's say, I.O. controller, right? Or, or let's say a memory controller, right? Uh, whatever controller. If you have a memory controller, then that controls a specific type of resource, right? Memory control controls memory consumption in the system, right? And and it's the same in V1, right? If you have multiple hierarchies, even when you have multiple hierarchies, you can only attach memory controller to one of them. Right? You cannot have you know two entities controlling memory on the same system. That doesn't make any sense, right? So like, the only restriction there is that if you you can have both V2 and V1 hierarchies. But the memory controller or any controller can only be one of those hierarchies at a given time. Right? So if you use memory controller on V2, you know you are not going to have that on V1, and then vice versa. But other than that, you know you can just have a gradual transition. You can have situation where you have memory and I/O on V2 and CPU on V1. That's completely fine. But, but 
but given the, the, new, the unified hierarchy in V2, does it mean that uh, we have to handle CPU memory everything if we put a no no uh, so you can you can uh, so unified means just that um, if you use V2 hierarchy and if you say attach IO and memory to it among the attached controllers they will share a, a resource domain definition with the hierarchy right uh, controllers which are not on V2 not on the unified hierarchy has nothing to do with them. So unified only among the controllers attached to V2. So you can make the transition gradual. Okay. Any other questions? Hi. So there's been some recent discussion about uh, C group delegation and some security concerns. So do you think there's some improvement there, or what do you think about that? Uh, I didn't quite catch the uh, question. Was that security and um, C-group? Yeah. I think uh, one concern may be to, when, when you want to move some uh, processes from C-group to another one, so it's not an atomic operation, so this may be a concern for uh, when you delegate some C-group parts, to encourage processes? I, I, I didn't quite catch the second part, I'm sorry. Um. So <coughs> some, some people are, are concerned because uh, you, if, if you want to apply some um, controller, some constraints uh, on a C group, on, on a processes from on a C group, mm -hmm. um, if um, Another process than other than uh, the main one, like uh, System D, for example. So um, let's say System D control uh, most processes, and if um, a process uh, controlling a C group, uh, thanks to delegation, move one um, set of processes from one C group to another, okay. some controller, well. They may some they may, they may have some races there because okay oh uh, so um okay I, I think I know okay so uh, like on in V one um we had a lot of well one of the issues that we had with V one two of the issues that we had with V one the first one is it was not hierarchical so if you delegate right um your security security wise you're kind of messed up because you're like you know, uh, you're delegating to someone who's lesser in terms of your you know security privileges, lesser to you. But you know that that you know that one would be able to you know affect your resource consumption and your control. So that was kind of messed up. The second part was that there was just we had a lot of bugs, um, a lot of waste conditions, the whole thing. So like the moving processes and stress, and if you configure things in certain ways, things would crash and and you know just misbehave. And I believe like it. I'm sure that there are bugs there, but um, um, Secret V2 should be safe in terms of delegation. Um, so if you delegate a subtree, so there are still a couple issues that need to be addressed. The first one is that you know the depth of the tree. We we probably should implement a way to to limit the depths from the parent, so that, you know it doesn't you know create like a, you know two thousand nested C groups. Um, and the other part. Um, uh, I forgot, but yeah, that's one of the issues. So, I mean, there, there, there are a couple of issues. Of my, I don't think they are big issues, but like in terms of like big picture thing, right? Uh, resource control, uh, privileges, you know, moving processes. I think we are pretty good on that side now. And as design wise, we should be uh, safe. Um, like the other part is that like uh, in V1, right? If you have, if you have like two subtrees uh, delegated, and they share the UID. You know, so if you delegate two completely disjoint subtrees to the same UID, they would be able to move processes and threads across those two subtrees, which is not what you want, right? I mean, you 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 created the subtree, and when you delegate it, you expect them to inside that subtree, not jump to other subtree. So uh, that uh, that part is fixed now. So in V two, uh, you cannot do that. You can only move inside your subtree. So uh, yeah, and it's design wise, I think it's okay now.
and then implementation wise we fixed most of the most you know easiest <laughs> bugs so should be fine hopefully Can support for the freeze uh, controller in CDD2? So um, freezer, freezer is an interesting story. Um, I didn't go there on this slide, but um, when you freeze a uh, 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 C group in a V1, what happens is that you basically stop user lens threads in random places in the corner in a D state, in an uninterruptible sleep state. Right? You cannot even kill them. If you try to p trace attach them, you're, you know, the, the attaching process if you do, it got fixed recently, but um, like until two, three months ago, if you have a GDB, right, outside in the, in the system root, and, and there's a process inside the uh, C group which is frozen, and if you try to attach to that, that process from outside, your GDB would enter uh, unin you know, uninterruptible sleep too, and it wouldn't be killable, right, which is just, it's just broken, right, the whole thing is just horribly broken. So um, what, um, well, so we are working on a, a better freezer for V2, and what we are going to do is that share um, job control stop. So it's just going to be, you know, when you send a sync stop, a process stops in a well-known spot, right? It's a well-defined, you can kill it, you can trace it, you can resume it, right? So um, uh, freezer being worked on V2 will be an extension of that. So it's going to be a transparent in terms of signal delivery, but it will use the same stopping mechanism. So that you know you 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 can kill it, and it's a well-defined state. It's not you know stuck in random place in the corner. So that's what you're working on, and probably hopefully we will see it, uh, before the end of this year. And um, what about the legacy user land tools, uh, CG config, CG red, uh, oh. that were used to, to set up the, the V1 C group the old fashioned way? Mm. Are they going to be supporting V2 or are they going to be deprecated? So, um, so, so <coughs> talking about like our example, so uh, inside Facebook, right, we also use all those tools. So um, we have like a lot of different V1 usages in, the flip, uh, in our flip. And they are just all inc incompatible, and some of them use, you know, uh, the CD management tools. Um, and it's not really pretty because, you know, that, you know, for example, like some users do CD clear, right? Which basically assumes that CD clear. What the CD clear does is that it just destroys all C group, every C group in the system, right? So if you know, if you have two users in the system, and they try to share the system, and if somebody does CD clear, then you just, I don't, want, I don't know, right? So um, it's really not built, like those uh, CD tools are not really built with um, sharing in mind, right? It's just, this is a, a basically a, a really thin layer on top of, of the file system interface. And um, uh, so, so as long as you use V1 hierarchy, right? They are all gonna work perfectly fine. Um, and, 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 and even if your system uses secret v2, right, um, inside your, your namespace, secret v1 hierarchy can be used, um, uh, except for that, you know, controller description, right, the same controller has to be on one type of hierarchy. Except for that, you can use um, the same tools that you have been using all the time. But um, whether those uh, CD tools and, and those libraries will be acquire secret v2 support is unclear at this point, because I'm not really sure how useful they are so I mean, if you if you think about system D, right? System D has native system support, and Leapfrog also does. So yeah, I, I I was talking mostly about the CG Red daemon, the rules engine daemon. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. enables you to to give some yeah. some regular expressions to classify yeah. the processes yeah. on the fly when they are spawned. And this tool mm. could be useful. Uh, system see, system D does the job, but mm -hmm. sometimes you don't have mm -hmm. system D. Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, there's nothing really preventing it. So the difference between V1 and V2 hierarchies are not that big, and V2 tends to be easier to manage. So um, if there are use cases where you know, they're useful, um, I'm not sure I'm going to work on it because um, you know, I myself wouldn't be using it, right? I mean, if I look at what people are using it. You know. But it, it may be worth the effort if, yeah, if it somebody is to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. if somebody yeah. wants it, then there's nothing preventing uh, that from happening.
Okay, thank you very much.